Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting Dragonfly Incarnation and I'm going to be sipping on a little Merlot and I thought that this was going to be an appropriate painting to paint today because it's January and the carnation is the official flower for January and dragonflies they just mean hope and new beginnings so we all need that in 2021 so I thought it was going to be a great painting for January. So if you enjoy this painting I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today I'm going to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, magenta, burnt umber, which I will call brown, green oxide, Mars black, cobalt blue, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using three brushes today. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush. And I have a number one round brush and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. Of course you can switch those up a little bit too if you'd like. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy palette and the paint and all that good stuff. But there's also another link for you where you can download a free image of the final painting so you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process and there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down in the description for you as well and that's all we're going to need today all right so what i'm going to be doing for the first step is i'm going to be painting my background or my sky i'm going to be using my large bristle brush the colors that I'm going to be using are black, brown, magenta, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a base color. It's going to be kind of on a, like the lavender side. I'm going to have my sky dark down in the bottom left, or darker, and then the lightest up in the top right. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to first pre-mix myself a color. So I know I want to use some of this magenta later, so I'm going to be separating some out so I can use that later. And then what I'm going to do with my, the rest of my magenta in here is I'm going to add a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, and a little bit of white. And then I'm just going to spin it around. So really what I'm looking for is kind of a soft, neutral, lavender type color. And you may want yours more vibrant than mine. You might want yours darker than mine. You might want yours more on the gray side than mine. You can certainly work yours out into whatever value or tonal value that you want. But you can see I'm just going for this like a grayish lavender type color. And then once I've achieved the color that I want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the bottom left hand corner just making sure I've got my color that I want. I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good. Maybe a little bit more on the brown side. I don't want it too too purple. I don't want it to take away from the focal point which is going to be my flower in the middle of my canvas. So I don't want mine too vibrant of a color so I'm making mine more on the on the duller side but you can certainly again utilize your visual preference to find the color that you want and it will end up a little bit darker as it dries so just kind of plan ahead for that as well so this is kind of where the um the color is that i'm going and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to start in my bottom left hand corner i'm not washing my brush or anything and i'm going to just start applying it almost in a crescent type brush stroke I'm going to be painting 
a whole lot of the canvas almost about half the way with this single color. And then when I get about halfway into the canvas, what I will end up doing is I'm gonna start introducing white onto my brush with this original color. And what I'm attempting to do is to get a nice gradual um, kind of circular gradient to go up towards that top right hand corner, almost to give us the illusion that the sun is up there. But you can tell I'm not using totally natural colors. I'm a kind of playing with the, you kind of cashing in my, you know, my creative license on this one. So these are not 100% natural colors that you're gonna see out in nature, but I thought that it was gonna complement it well, so I figured I would, I would give it a go. So I just added a bit of white onto my brush with that original background color. And as I go towards this upper right-hand corner, I will continue to add more white. But once I, I want this to be blended in, so I'm actually gonna back up or back into my previous section with that lighter color and what will happen is this is going to help to get those two areas to blend and I like using a continuous brush stroke so I don't have what I refer to as cut marks which is where you'd see the end of my um, brush stroke. You might be able to get this in one shot, you might want to do it two layers on it, whatever is visually appealing to you. If you want it to be smoother looking, I would recommend going for two coats. If you like the um, almost streaky look to it, then one coat would definitely work for you. So again, wherever your visual preference is, that's where you should take your painting because it is your painting. So I just keep adding more white onto my brush. That was a lot of white on my brush. <laughs> It dropped right onto the other part of the canvas. And you can see my um, painting is getting lighter and lighter as I go up towards this right corner of the canvas. And then once we get that this step all done, we will be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can continue to play with yours. If you want to do a second layer, feel free to do so. I'm probably just going to sit here for a minute and just keep rocking my brush back and forth until I get this to blend in as much as I want. My paint is nice and thin bodied, so it stays on the wetter side for a little while, to, which allows me to work these colors in. And then, like I said, we will be utilizing our medium brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first step to our stems and our leaves of our flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, and I'm gonna be using my background color plus white. I want these to have a little bit of dimension on them. I want them to kind of be almost out of focus. Not, I don't want them to take away from our flower or our dragonfly, so I wanna utilize the same color palette that we've already um, established. We're gonna add some highlights and shadows and a little bit of green onto them later, but this will just get them in place and give us a good starting point. So I'm gonna pick up my background color plus white on my brush, and I'm gonna have my big, my biggest flower somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna have its stem maybe about a third of the way from the bottom right hand corner into the canvas, and it's only gonna go up maybe about a quarter of the way maybe half or a third of the way up my canvas. Then I'm just going to go ahead and figure out where I want the rest of them. And if you go through wet paint, that's perfect. It's intended for you to go through some wet paint just so you have um, multiple colors throughout that stem. And so the stem ends up looking like it's got some dimension to it. So I'm just right now kind of establishing where I want my stems to go and then I'm going to put some leaves on there in a minute. I want my stems to be a little bit wider at the bottom, maybe. So the stems on these um, particular, or the little leaves on these particular flowers are just little green ones that kind of shoot out the side. They're kind of on the pointier side. So I'm just going to kind of have some fun here and just utilize my brush. I'm pushing it kind of hard and then bringing it almost to a point at the end of the flowers or the um, leaves. So you can certainly have as much fun with this as you want. You can have it cross 
over into another um, stem if you want to. Again, we'll be adding better detail to it later, but this is just gonna kinda get, get the party started. So maybe I've got a couple of leaves coming up this way. Maybe I've got some going off my canvas over here. Maybe I've got one going up in through here. And again, if you run through some wet paint, just roll with it. That's definitely gonna um, only enhance the appearance of your painting. So maybe that one's got a little bit of a wiggle to it. Maybe this one's smaller. So just try and keep them nice and diverse, which means just having different directions to them and different sizes to them. If they all look exactly the same, then you might lose the um, the idea that it's a natural element. I'm having a couple kind of coming, peeking out from the corner over here as if maybe there's a flower over on that side that's just kind of, you know, not in our focal point yet. And then I'm gonna put the, where the flower is gonna come out. So the little um, cup where the bud kind of comes out. So I'm gonna just put that at the top of my stems. I'm only having maybe two or three flowers. So I'm not gonna really do a whole heck of a lot for this. So it's just almost like this little bulb type area. And then I'm gonna have one up in through here. So just a little bit wider than your your actual stem itself and then that is all we're going to do for this step we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you've got your stems and your leaves in place you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the first layer on our flower petals so i'm going to be using my medium brush and i'm just going to be using magenta so these flowers uh, have a ton of little petals and they're really ripply around the edges. So when they're open, they almost look like a really rippled rose with a bunch of way more petals than a rose has. So I'm going to emulate my, I'm gonna have a really big one here that's fully open. So this is going to be a really big, huge flower in the middle. And then I'm going to have just little pieces of um, the corners of other flowers that are going to be surrounding just to bring that color uh, um, elsewhere. But my main flower in through here, it's going to be fully open, but it's going to be a little tipped because the, the dragonfly is coming in at it here. So the top of the flower is going to be here, but it's going to be really big and open. So as I'm doing this, I'm, oh, uh, just a little reminder, as I'm getting ready to paint, I forgot to tell you that you need to have your canvas dry before you start this step. So even if you have to take a little extra break, you know, extra little long break, or blow on it, or, you know, you can just whip out a blow dryer to blow dry it. Whatever way that you want to get yours dry, as long as that background is nice and dry, you'll have success on this step. Um, so when I do this, I'm going to be thinking that the edge of my petals are really ripply. I'm not really concerned about every single petal right now. I just want to give a basic shape to my flower. So this is going to be where my flower grows out of, and it's going to be growing in this direction. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm just going to kind of establish myself a starting point here which is gonna tell me, okay, well, that's, that's where it's gonna start. How tall do I want it to go? And I think I want it to be about this tall in through here, somewhere like that. And you can see I'm already doing my wiggle lines um, because that's gonna, that's gonna set my mind straight here. So if this is kind of the top of my flower, I think I'm gonna have maybe a little bit of a petal coming out here then maybe I'll have some petals coming out here and I'm really just wiggling my brush in order to get the shape of these exterior these exterior petals because again this is a very ripply type flower that we're dealing with so then maybe I'll come down in through here and then maybe I'll have a big one down in this vicinity like something like this and then once I've kind of got my exterior shape, what I'm gonna do, I'm just painting the whole thing in with my magenta color. No fancy brush stroke, just get the color on there. Your paint will probably be translucent or see-through, 
Don't worry about that. This is just allowing for us to get a base coat on here that we will be building off of later. So if you have some streaks or some light spots and some dark, dark spots, don't be terribly concerned about it because we're gonna be able to build um, on those later and you won't even be able to see them by the time we're done. This is again, just kind of adding that, that base coat for you. And then once I've got this central flower done, maybe I will add the little, some little petals coming off of this one, just the little bottom edge to it. And you can really have as much detail or as much fun with these ones coming off of the edges. I like to kind of make sure that they look a little bit different from one another. So you can certainly have fun with it as, as much as you want. Maybe I'll have, hmm, I really want something down in through here. So maybe I'll just have a little edge over here. That looks pretty. And then maybe Mm, it's always hard to figure out where you want those extra little bits and pieces. Maybe I'll have a little bit down here at the bottom of this one. Maybe there's one that's fallen on the, on the ground or something. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat of your flowers, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the shadows on our stems and our leaves. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using brown, black, and my background color. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm concentrating on where my light source is, which is the light up in the top right-hand corner, and I want everything on the opposing side to be a little bit darker, as well as in side the creases of my leaves. So I'm gonna start with some brown on my brush and I am gonna just kind of go on the left-hand side of some of these objects and just kind of establish where I want these, these little shadows to go. This is inside between the leaf and the, the stem itself. And this has a little shadow in between there. And then I just kind of get it to gradually go out into the, um, the piece that's next to it. On this left hand, this one that's the farthest away, this, this one is the one that I can use black on as well as the ones at the bottom. As you get towards the, the sun itself or the light source, you'll want to use more just brown. So I am going to touch my brush a little bit in brown and black to get this shadow underneath um, this little bulb part, the darkest, something like that. I'm gonna get it pretty dark underneath the flower petal itself. And if you run into a little bit of wet paint, don't worry about it. And then if you need to, you can pick up some of your background color to get that shadow to just kind of blend into the stem itself. So you can really just kind of work with the intensity of that. If you want it a little bit darker, make it a little bit darker. We're gonna be putting a highlight on it in a little bit, so that'll make it pop out a little bit more as well. I'm putting a little bit of black down at the bottom because I think that it would be a little bit more shadowed down at the bottom. Same thing with underneath here, maybe a little bit more black in through there. So black and brown is where I'm pretty much sitting for these ones, and again, I don't need them to be really in focus a thousand percent because this is intended to be not the focal point. I'm really just looking for this to be something that is, you know, adding complementary information to my background of my painting. So I don't really need this background, you know, these to be really, really in focus. But right now I am picking up a little bit more brown just to get it so it's not so black, black, black. And then I'm just gonna kind of go up in between my where my leaves are and on the left-hand side of the stem because it is on the opposing side of my, of my light source. So again, brown and or black. And if you need to, you go into the original background color to get it to blend in with any of those areas that you feel need that little punch of, um, of a shadow or of a, of a blend. 
So something like that. This underneath here is the underside to me. This is the side that's a little bit farther away from the light source. So I'm going to add a little bit of darkness here and then maybe in between here where these little leaves end up meeting the, um, the stem itself. And then I've just got this one in through here. I think I already hit that. I want to get this one up in through here. The left hand side of this is where I'm going to have my shadow. And then I can just get it to blend in with the rest of the area. If I needed to, I could pick up some of that original um, brown or uh, background color. And then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows, on your stems and your leaves, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm adding my highlights to my stems and my leaves. So I want these to take on a, a, a natural color, even though I've kind of muted and, and played with my color palette a little bit, I do want it to have some sort of natural element to it. So I am going to be using green, yellow, brown, and white as my highlight color. So I'm going to add some, some green elements to it and then I'm going to put some little pops of sunshine on it. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to first start by making myself a really natural green color. So I'm going to take green, yellow, brown, and a touch of white and I'm going to spin it together. So this is going to give me kind of like a light army green kind of color. I really want it pretty earthy with a lot of dirt in it. <laughs> the best way I can explain it is to get it to look nice and earthy, you want brown in it because that's going to make it look like it's got those elements of dirt in it. <laughs> and then once you've got the color that you want, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lightly, without going overboard, put it on what I'm gonna refer to as kind of the knuckle areas of the leaves. I know that's a weird terminology, but when I look at that, it, that's what it looks like to me. So it's the part where the leaf kind of starts coming out of the, of the stem itself, itself, and it almost looks like it's a bump on these particular flowers. So I'm going to call it the knuckle part. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of that green on my brush. And so I'm going to just put it in that area. And then I just gently almost blend it out into this into the neighboring area. I'm going to pop a little bit of a highlight even brighter in a minute. But right now, I'm just going to get that little that little area on there. So something like this in that in the knuckle area. <laughs> I got this one in through here. That one I extended a little bit far. And of course you can bring it down a little bit into the stem, that's totally fine. I got some in through here where that one meets. I've got these ones I can't really see the stem itself so I'm just gonna imagine that it's somewhere close to there. I've got it in here. And I am just, you know, again, trying to add a a natural element to this with the with the colors that I'm choosing to do. So you could certainly, you know, carry this even further into the stems. They do have, I think, full on green stems, the carnations. But, you know, again, I'm just doing my own painterly interpretation. I do know that the little buds are also green. So I'm going to just add some of my army green kind of color in through there. I'm going to do the same thing on this one and I'm bringing it right to the edge and I'm bringing it down that stem just a little bit. I'm not using a ton of paint so that way I can just kind of blend it into the neighboring area. And then once I have it everywhere that I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that same green and I'm gonna add yellow and white to it. So I'm in essence just making it lighter and brighter and that's gonna be my highlight color to that particular section. So I get my little light color going, something like this. And I don't wanna do the whole area, I'm just gonna kind of add just a little bit in there just to give it that extra bit of, of a bump to it. So you can 
you know, play with this. And if you want it even more bright than mine, you can certainly, I'm gonna definitely add a little bit more in through this area so you can really see the dimensional element of this. But the other areas, that's gonna be visually however intense you want it to be. You might want yours to have a lot of this element to it. You might really like the colors that are happening when you're doing this. You might want to back it off a little bit. Maybe you liked that muted color better that we started with. So whatever is, again, visually appealing to you, work, work it that way on your canvas. I want these to be just a little bit brighter. Get them to pop out just a little bit more in that little center area. And then up in through the buds, I'm, I want you to be able to really detect the sunshine on those. So I'm gonna elevate those even more with a little bit more yellow and white. And you might find if your paint underneath is still a little wet, it might be difficult to do these, um, these layers right one after the other. So if that happens to you, if you run into an area where it's just not dry enough for you to add another little layer on it, just wait for it to dry for a minute or you can hit it with a blow dryer, whatever you want. But you can see I'm really getting this section to be nice and bright so you can see that it's being hit by the sun and it's, get, it's giving it some good dimensional element to it. Maybe some of that army green back in here just to make sure that it blends nice and well. And then we're gonna use our, let's see, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your pretty highlights, you could, I suppose, even add a bit of this onto some of the tips of these leaves. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'm adding just a teeny bit of sunshine onto the tips of these, of the leaves. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes just adding that little thing that you didn't think you were gonna do helps to make it and a little highlight over here. Um, so we're gonna use this, uh, your medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your leaves and your stems the way that you want them, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do, I'm gonna call it petal placement. <laughs> we're gonna use our medium brush and I'm gonna be using magenta, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna pre-mix myself kind of like um, a peachy kind of color. I, I want it to be slightly lighter than this, but I don't want it to be too on the pink side. So I'm gonna add a little yellow to it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my magenta, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna mix it together. I don't need it to be any perfect color. I just want it to be a little bit lighter than this and a little less magenta-y, a little less pinky. So I've got something in this vicinity and you'll see as I put it on the canvas, it's gonna look a little bit lighter than it does on my palette simply because it's gonna be on top of that dark color. So what I'm gonna do, these petals are very, like I mentioned early, ripply and there's a ton of them. So I'm gonna start in what I like to refer to as the nucleus of the flower, the center of the flower. And to me, my center of my flower is gonna be up and through here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna, in essence, kind of do a wiggly um, brush stroke to get the edges of all of the little petals that are gonna be at the top. And those are gonna be really close together and very tight. And then as I work my way towards these leaves at the bottom that are in essence gonna be closer to us and more open, my wiggle lines are gonna be farther apart from one another. So it'll look like they're closer to us and that they're more in an open position. So I have the paint on my brush and I will reload my brush often cause I really just wanna have, I'm gonna use the tip of my brush to, um, almost just do lines as opposed to thick brush strokes. So I'll reload it often so I can just work with the tip of my brush. So I'm gonna start in through here and I'm just gonna do these broken kind of wiggle lines, almost in a cylindrical or a circular kind of fashion. Um, again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. You're just 
kind of get in the wiggle lines. I see that my brush is starting to separate now, so I'm gonna reload my brush so I can just work with the with the tip of my brush. I suppose you could have used your smaller brush to do this. I'm gonna do the edges too. And now that I'm getting towards the middle from top to bottom, now I'm gonna start almost making these a little bit on the further away from each other. And they don't all have to touch. You can really just get them to be as dispersed as you want and I'm getting them to have wiggle 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 lines something like this and these are just going to be the edges of my of my petals so maybe this one's going to have one in through here and again the formation is really whatever comes to you naturally it doesn't have to be any perfect formation this is just an organic type of um, painting that we're doing so you can really have um, a loose interpretation as you see fit so I think that's going to do it for that one and then the ones oops I got this little edge here don't forget about the the, the prettiest edge over there um, the ones over here the you don't really need much because you might not even see the separation of the petals so of you know multiple petals so maybe you just do a little bit of that um, color at the edge of it maybe just a little bit over here and again this is just the the tippy top of these um, flowers that are on the edge and then we are going to use our small brush for the next step so once you've got your petal placement you can put the medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be doing shadows inside of our petals. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black and magenta. So how I'm gonna do this is I am going to pre-mix myself a little bit of a darker magenta. So I'm just using a touch of black and adding it to my magenta. It doesn't have to be super dark. Uh, you don't want it necessarily black, black, black. You just need it darker than the, the um, regular magenta. So something like that is where I'm going. It's probably gonna look like a dark purple kind of color for you. And then what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna kind of arbitrarily pick some spots where I want the deepest, darkest places to be. I'm gonna have more on the top section and the bottom left section because again my light source is over there so my deepest darkest parts are going to be in the center where my petals are the closest and over here on the left where they're in the shadow the most so again i'm just gonna kind of do little like squiggly lines in between some of those the um edge markers that we did on the last step you can even do some bigger spots if you want it doesn't just have to be the little squiggle lines you can get a little bit more um, bold and do some larger sections if you want to and this is really just going to tell the viewer so if this is the the edge of a petal I could in essence have a little bit of a shadow underneath it but it doesn't just have to be underneath it. It could be inside these little crevices up top in through here. So you can really kind of have a carefree way of where you put them. Maybe this petal here, we're seeing the outer side of it. So maybe the shadow is right along there and it just kind of fades into this whole section in through there so you can you know have fun with where you want to put them you don't have to put them everywhere they don't have to be clean clean lines um, but what you don't want to do is you don't necessarily want to put them on top of your edges that you have already established so I'm just going to kind of put a few in through here and of course I'm putting more on this left hand side than I am on the right hand side. The right hand side will have natural shadows with that regular magenta because we'll be putting some um, the highlighted areas on which will which will increase the intensity of that darkness but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute over there. So I'm just adding some more shadows over here on the left hand side and you can see I'm definitely adding more on the left than I am on the right side of the flower. Maybe I've got one or two in through here. I just ran through some of my wet peach 
which was okay. I'm just gonna get this over here, maybe one in through here. And then once I've got this done, I'm gonna use the same brush for the next step, but I will wash and dry it, just pre-mixing a little bit more of my shadow color. I want a couple of really deep, dark pieces in through here. Just make sure I've got it represented the way that I want it to. And then I'm gonna wash and dry this brush. Ooh, do I need shadows on the other ones? Ooh, maybe I need a little bit of a shadow. Let's put a couple in here. Just, you don't wanna forget these little, the other little petals that you have. There we go, that'll work. Okay, wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing the petal shapes. So we put them in place, then we gave some shadows in between them. Now we've got to finish the, the shape of them, telling the viewer if it's leaning over or if it's curled up, if it's, you know, if we're just seeing the edges of it. So my dominant color that I'm gonna use is my magenta, but I will also use that peachy color that I had, I might use a little bit of white. Um, I might use some of that darker shade that I also use, but the dominant color is gonna be magenta, the peach, and white. And I'm really gonna, the these inside petals aren't gonna, you don't need to do much other than some squiggles to make sure that you have a nice second coat. It's the ones on the edge, the bigger ones that are more in focus that you have to kind of think a little bit more about. So I'm gonna have a couple of them where we see like they're curled up like this. And then I'm gonna have like these ones that are maybe leaning over like that. So really you just wanna understand what side of the petal you're seeing and then kind of go with that. Most of these ones over here are just gonna be laying down like this. Most of these are gonna be laying down like this. It's kind of these ones in here that I might have them cupping up a little bit. So if I haven't scared you enough already, <laughs> let's go. Um, so I'm gonna start with just a little bit of my magenta and that peach on my brush just so I can kind of get my first one or two going, and then once I've um, started to work my way into it, it hopefully you'll kind of see, see, see where my, my brain is going. So in through here, I know that I've already established my edge with that kind of peachy color. So really what I can do, I do wanna make sure that I have a crooked edge to it, something like that. And then this one is just gonna be fading into my shadow and through there. So all I really need to do is kind of get myself a gradient from the edge to the shadowed part. So something like this is gonna do it for me. I've got my peachy color on the edge and then I just kind of fade it into the darker shadowy area. So you might need to pick up a little bit of the magenta or a little bit of the um, darker color, whatever works for you. So same thing, I'll do the same thing here. I'm gonna start with my magenta at the edge, make sure that it's nice and wiggly because that's what these leaves do. They've got these petals, they've got that edge to them. I'm picking up some magenta and that um, peachy color and then I'm just gonna get it to gradually go into the shadowed area. So something like that. Now I've got that one done enough for me to move on to the next one. So my next one is in through here. I've got my peach. So I, I think I want this edge to be, you know, pretty wiggly in through there. I'm gonna pick up some of my magenta color and just get it to if you, if you put a bit of a curve on your brush stroke, that'll give the viewer even more information that it is in fact curving into that dark shadowy area. And you can have your petals overlapping one another. You can have them as light or as dark as you want. This one's gonna be a little bit yeah. lighter in through here. And then I'm gonna pick up some of that magenta and I'm just gonna kind of repeat until I have all of my petals in the direction that I want. There goes my doggy. <laughs> it's funny how they just know when to park. So I've got my peach again, just starting the edge in through here. And then I'm gonna pick up some of that magenta. And the, the um, 
petals on the exterior, the ones that we see more of, are clearly going to be the more difficult ones to do. So these ones in through here, you can see uh, this is a little wonky area here, so I'm just adding a little bit more shadow in through there. There we go. The, I want the maybe one or two of these ones over here to look like they're going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to have my edge really bright in through here, and then they're going to almost f fade down into this darkness into here. So I might have to add an extra shadow where I didn't already have one placed, but if you want to have that effect where you're seeing the underside of it and it's curled up, you need that highlight or the brightest part up here and then it kind of sinks into the darkness over and through that area. So I'm going to just pull in a little bit of my darker um, shadowy color over in through here and that's going to give me the effect that this in fact is kind of curled up and then maybe I've got a couple of maybe this is the edge over here maybe there's another one and there's a the, I, the these flowers have so many petals so if you're getting into it and you're like, oh, that area doesn't look right, just add another little petal into it. It really works out just fine. So that's going to be how I um, tackle those outside ones. When I get to the inside, these little tiny ones in through here, really I just want my lighter ones over on that side and I'll have some little darker ones over here. So I'm just adding the... Um, magenta yellow and white to my brush and almost just kind of making sure I have a second coat on all of this area up in through here but I'm really not terribly concerned about any extreme perfect detail I just want to make sure that I have a second coat on everything and that I'm not seeing any of my background color underneath there and then I just want to make sure that I am doing a full second coat on the entire flower. So once I've pretty much figured out what my game plan is as to these particular petals, you know, I've got this one in through here. I kind of skipped around a little bit so I could show you that one over there, but I still have some more over here that need attending to. Um, but again, I'm, I'm just doing a pretty similar process. I'm starting with that lighter color on the edge of it and then I'm kind of going a little bit into the darkness making sure that I have a full second coat. This one uh, is probably, I don't know what this one's going to do. Maybe this one is going to be, mm, maybe this one's going to be up a little bit too. So maybe I'm going to have this one kind of, this is going to be the edge like this and then maybe it's going to go into the darkness in through here. So again, you can really kind of play it out as as you're painting to see, you know, visually what you want it to do. And then I'm just going to get these last couple in through here. And then we just have one more step on these petals before we start tackling another super beautiful, fun area of the painting. This is going to be um, my lighter ones in through here. So I am going to add a bit more white to these ones as I am putting my shape onto them. And again, if you want them to look like they're bending over, you could actually add a little bit of a curve to your brush stroke. But you still want to be able to understand where the edge of the petals are. So utilize your visual um, direction to to tell the viewer where where that in fact is I think this one maybe maybe this one's gonna be like this I gotta put my head back <laughs> so I understand what that little petal is gonna do I think this one's gonna kind of fade down into this little darkness in through here yeah that looks good and then oh we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. Oh, I want this one to cross over here. Crossing your um, petals over the, the neighboring stem also adds a whole bunch of natural element to it. So if you're close to a stem and you want to kick it up a notch, cross over it a little bit and that's going to really help to add some great dimensional elements. But 
be mindful, keep these, these edges wiggly. I keep having to catch myself because I keep wanting to do them smooth, but I'm, well, we can, we've got another step coming that will help us to enhance the wiggle on the edges of those um, petals. But once you've got the shape on your petals, I think I'm doing pretty good in through here. Just adding a little bit more here and there and everywhere to tell my, my story of the shape of my, my petals. Once I've done that, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. So you can just wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our petals and we're gonna do that with highlights. So I know I didn't really do a whole heck of a lot to these ones over here because they don't really need much. We're gonna just add a highlight and poof, they're gonna be done. But it, this is gonna be our, our um, flower that is really in the main focal area. So again, I'm gonna use the same colors. I'm gonna be using white, my peach, my magenta, and maybe, that's probably it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know, or at least I'll try to. I'm gonna use my small brush, and really, I'm just adding the highlights, the sunshine, the, this is gonna tell you exactly where the tips of all of these little leaves are, or these petals are. I, this is where I can add extra little edges if I don't feel, if it's too uniform, or I feel like I want more wiggle to it, this is where I'm gonna do it. So, I'm gonna start with just white on my brush. I've got some white paint on my brush. I really want this right hand side to be the lightest. So I can take this and just kind of wiggle it along those edges. I'm gonna add a really bright highlight onto this edge in through here. I'm gonna pick up now white and magenta to get myself a nice little pink color. Um, if I mix my white and my magenta together, that's gonna give me this beautiful little pink color that I can use, especially on this right hand side. And again, my biggest goal here is to make sure that this right hand side speaks of the sunshine and the highlight and the, the brightest areas of my, of my petals. And you can see right now I'm doing a lot of wiggle with my, with my brush, getting these real bright, little highlights on the edges of these of these petals and then sometimes you can just kind of rub your brush into kind of um, allowing it to blend into the neighboring area sometimes you might have to pick up some of the original um, background color of that particular petal you can just kind of feel it and 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 bend it and twist it and shape it the way that you need to but i really want these right hand ones to be nice and light so i am adding a lot of the magenta and white to these um few ones over here to get the that highlight on them and i'm just going to kind of alternate the colors the white uh magenta and the peachy color sometimes i'm going to use i already kind of pre-mixed myself a little bit of pink on the fly. So those will be the colors that I'm gonna be using throughout this. I'm gonna try and call them out as I do it, but sometimes I know I just go and pick up colors and forget to tell you. So I've got the really, I wanna get the, this wiggle happening on the edges of these, these petals to make sure they really stand out and you can, you can see them really, really well. And if you want to, you can of course add extra little edges here and there. Right now I've just got the, um, the white that I'm utilizing. I don't want these to be really white over here, so I'm gonna pick up some of that, that peach and magenta to get make sure that I don't over highlight this left hand side. That can really easily happen. So as you're going about it, if if you know, sometimes I recommend standing back from your your painting at looking at it from a distance because what can happen is you're working at it and you're like, oh my god, I love this this little highlight. It's bringing this petal right right to life. And before you know it, you've done that same highlight all over the entire the entire flower. Now it just looks like the light source is coming from every every angle it, or all you know all the way around. When in essence, it should just be coming from over there. So 
if if you feel yourself sometimes almost having too much fun <laughs> that that's usually a good sign that you might be getting lost in your painting and walk away <laughs> that's what happens to me i know i i know it happens to me all the time i'm just going about it. i'm like oh my god oh my god i'm having fun i'm having fun i'm having fun i'm having fun oh crap i've painted the whole thing a, a color that i didn't want to because i was just having too much fun so just you know be mindful of where your fun level is <laughs> and just kind of um, know that you might need to step back every now and again to, to control yourself. And again, I'm just really um, right now kind of making sure I've got a lot of, a lot of um, wiggle on the ends of these, these petals. I do want some additional highlights over here on the left hand side but I don't want it to go bright, bright, bright like that right hand side. So I picked up magenta and white and this is gonna help me to get a, a little bits of highlights in through here and I don't need to cover the whole thing, the whole edge of the petal, but it gives me those extra bits of highlights without turning it that light over there. So that's one way to control it, never just have only white on your brush. Make sure that whenever you're doing the highlight for that particular area that you've got white plus something else on your brush and that will ensure that you don't bring it into that vibrancy of the other side that is supposed to be lighter than um, lighter than the side that you're working on. So, you know, there's a couple of those little tricks and again, if you can try and keep the, the wiggle to the end of these uh, leaves that's going to help to tell the the story of this particular flower these carnations they can come in any color you want I used to know a florist who had buckets and buckets and buckets of these flowers some that were naturally dyed or naturally colored during their growth process and then others that they would stick in buckets and put dye in the bucket so they could turn them any color they wanted for any holiday. So there'd be green ones for, for um, St. Patrick's Day and there'd be red ones for Valentine's Day and there'd be all different kinds of colors for any occasion of the year that you wanted. So you could make these into any color you want. Carnations come in a rainbow of colors. So I was just, you know, going for the a nice pretty pink one, but you could certainly go for whatever kind of color variation that you want. And I'm just having fun adding my highlights. You can get this into whatever intensity you want. I'm probably going to stick my head back a little bit more now so I can make sure that I've got some of these beautiful edges on these um, ones coming in through here. I want this to look like it's kind of sinking into this one and maybe this one is cupping like that. So you can really, you know, visually get this to look in whatever way you want. I'm just having, oh, I have black on my brush on the light side. Yikes. That was a yikes that we can magically make go away, I think. A little bit of water, a little bit of finger. Yeah, it's all gone now. <laughs> um, but I'm just gonna keep adding my little bits of, of bright highlight in through these edges, making sure that it reads as much sunshine. I can't believe how much I'm using my finger. I don't really mean to do that. It's just, it's getting away from me today. Um, but you can see I'm continuing to just add these these little wiggles to these edges to make sure that I've got some beautiful highlights in through here. I'm almost there. I'm feeling I'm feeling the light is coming from over there. Sometimes it takes a minute to to get it there, but once you've got it there, I do want to add some on the little um petals down below. So I'm going to just kind of get these ones the way that I want to and then I'm going to move down there real quick and just get a couple of those added on there. Yeah, here we go. I've got the underside of this one showing. Nice. Just a couple little pops of these little highlights here. So I'm going to just go up top. I know I want this one to be a little bit lighter and brighter, so I'm really not going to do a whole heck of a lot to these at all. Just going to kind of add little bits of the edges of those flower, the little petals, 
maybe you, it's just catching a tiny bit of the sunshine in through there. I'm gonna pick some of that magenta back up. And again, it's more about just making sure that you have full coverage on these little um, pieces that are coming off the sides and that it tells the same story that the light is coming from over there. So just adding a touch of the little bits of the little ripply little petals at the top. We've got a couple in through here. I don't just want white, but I do definitely want to make sure that I've got um, some bright little bits that will show the, the edges of those petals. And again, you can keep tweaking yours as much as you want. I'm feeling like mine's pretty pretty good right now like it's telling enough of the story that I want it to tell so I'm feeling like I'm ready to move on to the next step I might tweak it a little bit more but it's pretty good for me right now so we are going to be using this small brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful petals as perfect as you want them to be you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our dragonfly body. We're gonna use our small brush and we're gonna use just blue paint. So what I'm gonna do is I am loading my brush with blue paint and I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and then we're just gonna do a line and then we will connect the dots and then we'll make a shape and it'll look like a dragonfly body by the time we're done. So what I've done is I'm gonna come up well, I'm putting it where it's gonna be relative to my flower. If your flower is somewhere way different than mine, then you may wanna put it somewhere else. I'm gonna be putting mine a little bit, maybe an inch and a half to two inches above the center of my um, flower in the direction of the flower direction. So my flowers tip like this, so I'm gonna go about an inch and a half to two inches away from there, make myself a little bit of a dot, then I'm going to go diagonally this way and I'm going to come maybe about a half of or maybe about an inch away from the edge of my canvas and make myself a dot. Now I'm going to connect these two with a slender line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but um, you want it to be on the skinnier side because we're going to be shaping it in a minute. So right now this is just kind of giving us the the center um, area of, of the whole structure. So once I've got that, I want my um, tail to look almost like it's coming up a little bit at the end or have a little bit of a bend to it. So when I go to shape this, this is gonna be like my pointiest kind of area. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker in through here as I come down here and then we'll put the body on in through here, and then our head is gonna go here. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna start at the end of my tail, and that's gonna be the skinniest part about I'll try and keep my hand out of the way. And then I'm going to bring my line almost in a downward, not much. We don't need much movement or much um, shape on this at all, just a little tiny curve will be just fine. So once I've got it like that, then I just kind of clean it up on the other side. So I'm just kind of cleaning it up and I'm gonna just stick it up a teeny tiny, not up, but a little bit at an angle at that edge. Just a itty bitty bit, not much at all, something like that. And then as I get towards the upper part of it, I'm going to thicken the top side of the line. That's going to give me the illusion of a bend in that seemingly straight line that we just made. So I'm just thickening up kind of the top side of it. And again, it doesn't have to be much, maybe um, to the width of like a quarter of an inch or so. And your line doesn't even have to be perfectly clean because we're going to be adding a lot of elements to it in a little bit anyways and if you don't get the curve that the little bit of a bend in this don't don't worry about it it'll you know it'll all work out in the in the long run the i'm going to put the head on first so 
that way we kind of had a uh, idea of where the body is going to go. My head is actually going to be a little bit of an oval going towards my flower. So something like this from that dot that we made. Maybe the size of like a pea doesn't have to be big at all. And then my body is going to be maybe about, I would say, an inch and a half to two inches um, long. So something like this. It doesn't. It bumps up a little bit from the um, from this from the tail part, but not much. Just a little little tiny bit in through there. And dragonflies come in all different colors and shapes and sizes too. So if yours doesn't come out exactly like mine, it's okay. They they. I think I read that there's like three thousand different species of dragonflies, and that they've lived perhaps millions of years. So <laughs> they are strong and sturdy little insects that have withstood the test of time. So I'm going to just kind of bump this out a little bit. I don't need it to be much more than the um, much more than the width of the head. So something like this. And then I'm just going to color it in blue. So once you've got your body shape on, we are going to use the same brush for the next step, but you're going to want to wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting ourselves on some dainty little dragonfly legs. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using black and white paint and water <laughs> so I can get these little tiny, almost like translucent little skinny lines. Um, I think the dragonfly has six legs. I'm hoping I'm right. I think I really am right. <laughs> so they have little tiny ones up in the front, kind of like a medium length one, almost like where a normal person's arm would be. And then um, some longer ones where our legs would be. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to water down some of my black paint. So it is like an ink consistency, if not even thinner. Um, this is going to give me good control on the tip of my brush. I really want this to be a nice skinny line. So the thinner my paint is, the more moisture will be held in my bristles, which means I can have, um, it have a longer brush stroke without having to reload. So I also take my brush and I spin it on the side of my palette so my brush is nice and pointy. So once you've done that, what you can do is I'm gonna have my front legs, They're, think of these as just little tiny details. I'm gonna have my front legs kind of near the, the neck area. I'm feeling like my brush isn't pointy enough, like I'm nervous to do that first stroke. Hold on, let me see if I've got a, a pointier brush. I don't wanna go ahead and do that first stroke and then him look like he's got you know, the biggest leg in the world. I still want a number one, but I feel like my brush is a little frayed. Hold on a second. That might work better. Hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. This is what you do when you're, when you're get, getting ready. Oh, yeah, that's going to work better. Um, when you're getting ready to make your first mark on a skinny, skinny, tiny line, you want to have a nice pointy brush. So that's good. That, that looks like it's going to work for me. Okay. So I've got teeny tiny lines. I think they have almost like... Um, two uh, joints. So I'm going to go kind of down, forward, and then down again, like that. And then I'll do another one at a slightly different angle. So you can see both of them like that. Yeah, that works. Whew. I was a little nervous there that I wasn't going to get a nice skinny line for you. <laughs> and then I'm going to do a similar ones about a uh, little bit further down, almost I'm going to call it where the shoulder is. So I'm going to come down to the back like that. Maybe these are going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to go out a little bit further. Then it's going to come down with like a little claw sensory thing on the edge. I'm going to do another one that would be coming out the other side of the body. And again, just maybe at a slightly different angle. So that way it looks pretty natural. Maybe something like this. And if you, um, 
if your lines end up being a little bit wider than you want them to be, what you we're going to um, add a little bit of a light highlight to them in a second and that will allow you to make them look a little bit more slender plus the wings are going to be on top of them later too so that can help as well so then this is going to be the longer ones which are going to be the back legs so maybe a little bit longer like that like this is the knee this is the bottom part something like that and then we'll go forward with a little claw or sensory thing on the edge and then I'll do my second one at a little bit different of an angle maybe something like that Whew. those tiny lines they're gonna they get you then I'm just wiping my brush off and uh, washing it and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of watered down white paint and I'm gonna add little bits of highlights just to add a little dimensional element to this. So I'm really just streaking in tiny little white spots wherever you want. It doesn't have to be anywhere in particular unless you have an area that you feel needs to um, be minimized. Then you can just add that little bit of a white highlight to it. And then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the dragonfly body and head. I'm gonna use my small brush. I am using black, blue, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm, whenever I look at these type of insects um, or beetles or anything that has that almost shell as an exterior as I feel that the dragonfly does, I think of it like armor and every little piece has a little dark shadow in between it or underneath it. So I'm gonna start with black and almost make my little sections for the armor of the dragonfly. So I've got, my, and I'm using my watered down black so I have good control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm in essence going to give, I'll start at, the, at his head and then I'll work my way back. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a um, section around the back of the neck. I think they've, it's gonna have some little dark spots on the top. And really you can have fun with the um, assortment of sections of your armor, but if you want it to have a good dimensional element, I'm gonna give it a, the top, make sure that I have the top of the back up here and then everything's going to have a little bit of a curve to it to give the illusion of a um of a rounded type object so i'm just going to put a little bit of a stripe down the center of the back then i'm going to give myself a couple of little armor sections going in through here maybe i've got a little bit underneath the belly and then down the tail, I'm just going to um, do these little curved lines, maybe every inch or so, something like that. I think I've, I, I'm going to end up making my tail a little bit wider when I um, put the colored, colored part on because it looks a little narrow right now. But I'm going to add a touch of black underneath here. This is going to add a, that shadowy dimensional element to it. And if you want to, you can certainly widen it if you need to. But I think when I add the light colors on the top, that will help. Yeah, that looks nice. So I've got my separation of my um, armor areas. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna start building the lighter sections. So I said I was gonna use yellow and blue. I'm gonna make myself a cool, like a neat, teal kind of color so I'm using yellow and blue and I'm just kind of mixing them together to get this really pretty I, I, I just see it a lot in dragonflies my sister has a dragonfly tattoo um, because I dragonflies they they symbolize a lot of different things for people strength and moving forward and change and all kinds of beautiful um, symbol symbolization goes into this but anyways my sister has one on her leg that means a real lot to her and it has these teal colors in it so we're gonna we're gonna honor my sister a little bit here so I did yellow and blue and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white into it so I can get this really pretty color in through here 
and I'm just really adding these nice streaks into it. I know that I want to have some in through the face. I'm gonna have some coming up the bottom of this belly part. I'm gonna have a whole lot on the tail. The blue is acting as a beautiful under color for me. It's, it's really adding a nice dimensional element to it. So now that I've got my pretty teal on there, I'm gonna pick up white without washing my brush. So I still have that, that teal type color and I'm gonna start adding these pops of, I'm gonna call them the, the highlights and the glow on, on the dragonfly itself. So just adding maybe some on the front where it's gonna be lit up by the sunshine down the spine on the spine. I don't know if it's the spine, but the um, top of the back somewhere in through here. I'm definitely gonna add a bunch on the tail and you can see I'm going in between those sections so adding it to the top of each section I haven't reloaded my brush I'm just kind of using the remnants on my brush like this and like this and then I think I'm gonna lighten up these sections just a little bit I'm just using the remnants on my brush right now it is working out really well for me so you can you know, you might find that you need to reload yours or add any kind of um, additional colors. Maybe you want yours a different color than mine. Maybe you want yours pink to be complementary to your um, flower. But after you've got your, your beautiful dragonfly all nice and colorized and he's got this beautiful highlight on the on, I think, what would be the eye and the face and the... Um, on the back, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and done, I'm just adding a bit more, bit more of my light color in through here. But once you've got yours as dimensional as you want, we are going to be utilizing the same brush. Yeah, that looks pretty. Um, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the wings on our dragonfly. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors I'm using are white, yellow, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first do a really um, light, translucent, kind of sketchy outline for my wings and then I'll show you how to color them in because to the best of my knowledge, dragonfly wings are usually pretty translucent. Um, so you can see through them. I know that there are some with colors in their wings, but we're gonna kinda try and go for a nice translucent one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my white with a touch of yellow and a little bit of water and water it down. So I'm just going for a really thin paint right now, uh, very fluid so I can emulate these nice sketchy lines and I don't have to worry too much if, because I'm using a lot of water in it, it will be see-through. It's gonna be more vibrant when it's wet, but when it dries, I'm on the safer side because it will be more see-through and then we can just add to it. So watered down white and yellow. I want this to be a very full dragonfly and take up a lot of space. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna just kind of mark the tips of my top two um, wings and then we'll build everything off of that. So the wings are gonna come out of where the spine is. There's two that, you know, the top, there's two sets. There's a set that comes out the top and then there's a set that comes out off the bottom of this main shell area. So I want this to be pretty far out, so I'm gonna bring the tip of this wing to about here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in essence, kind of measure how far I just did that because the one on the right side should be a little bit longer because it's closer to us. So I'm gonna say, okay, here's my brush and that is about that long. My other one I want to be coming out in this direction and I want it to be a little bit longer than that. So I come from the spine, I'm gonna go up in kind of a diagonal and I think it would be right about here is where my second one is gonna go. 
So what I'm going to do, I still have some of that light color on my brush, so I'm just going to kind of take from this dot and bring it back to the spine. You don't want it too, too straight of a line, so give it a little bit of a curve if you can. Not much, but just a little bit. And then you're going to do the same thing for here. It's going to go in front of the face, the little dragonfly face, and you're going to come and bring it right somewhere in through there. And then I'm going to bring this and curve it, and it's going to come about, I would say, a third of the way down the dragonfly's back, something like that. So I'm going to bring it around this corner, something like this, and then you can bring it back up. And it doesn't have to be perfect because these wings can come in different shapes and sizes and colors and all that good stuff. You just kind of want the two sides to look similar to one another, like they would belong to the same, the same dragonfly. So I'm going to bring this one in a similar kind of direction, maybe something out here and then bring it up in front of this uh, petal area, something like that. So then my next set of wings is going to be just a little bit away from the first one, somewhere like that. I want this to come out maybe just a little bit further, so something like in through there. So I can go ahead and connect these two, something like this, and bring it down and around, and it's going to come to the back area in through here. And then again, you can kind of measure this one if you want to, to see how long that one is. And then you want to make the other one a little bit longer. And, and again, kind of a similar format or shape to it. So again, I'm bringing it down in through here and I want a little bit, oh, I lost my mark. I lost my mark. I thought I knew where it was. Let's see, I think I see it, but I just want to make sure that I do in fact see it. So I think somewhere in through there. And I'm gonna make sure I have a little bit of a of a bend. Oh, I keep I keep move, losing my mark. I think I'm somewhere in through there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make this this bottom wing something like this. And again you can see I'm just doing loose sketchy lines because what we're gonna do now that we've got our shape on there, yeah that looks pretty good, is I'm gonna take that same color and I'm going to brighten up the edges and then just bring these little streaks of almost like, they almost look like spider webs to me. So I've got white, uh, watered down white on my brush right now. It could be white and yellow, but more, more on the white side. The light is over there. So that's where the brightest part of my wings is gonna be. So a little bit of watered down white. I'm just kind of rubbing in this almost translucent color along the edges and then I can just bring these little tiny streaks in through the actual wing itself. And I'm going to do that to this one as well. Just these little tiny translucent streaks but again I want the edge to be the brightest. This little tip at the edge that's going to have the most light or the most white on it because it's being lit up by that light source. And then when you come on to the opposing wings over here, it's gonna be the right side in through near the body that gets the brightest area to it. So I've got the most white on my brush right now. And if you feel like your white is too solid and you can't see through it, then you wanna add a little bit of water to your brush and that's gonna help you to almost um, pull it out in this translucent type fashion and then I'm just going to take my brush with the remnants on it and just wisp in a couple of these little uh, almost geometric type lines throughout the wing itself so it's almost so it looks nice and translucent and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my brush real quick and I'm going to put a tiny bit of watered down black paint on my brush I found a lot of the dragonflies I was looking at had this little black edge to the top of their wings, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that there. I'm not quite sure what the significance is of it, so I'm gonna put a little tiny black edge along the edge of the tops of these wings, something like that. 
something like this and it, I'm going to do it to all four of the wings and then of course you can modify this as much as you want you could make these wings more intense if you wanted with more color in them or more shape to them whatever is visually appealing to you feel free to bring this into your visual reference or visual pleasure point and then we have oh, one more step to go it's going to be with this small brush so once you've got your beautiful dragonfly on here you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. And I think I'm gonna sign this in the bottom right because I don't wanna take away from my, my dragonfly. So I'm signing it in the bottom right with my initials. You could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you want to be your identifying mark is totally fine. It's your painting. You sign it whatever way you'd like to. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful flower with a delightful insect coming near it. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.